five there. It's not bad, but give that a second for them to catch up. Scroll this down a bit. Yo, what's up, you guys? The hype is real. <laughs> hype, hype, hype. Yo, give me that camera. <laughs> <laughs> Hands you a phone. <laughs> yeah. We should do that with IG. Yo, give me that camera. Put it down here gently. <laughs> <laughs> Don't drop it like I always do. Let me get IG up in here. You guys are turning for hottest setting up IG uh, videos on the internet. Oh, wait. Wrong way. Wrong way. Let me flip that around. There we go. Uh, get everybody. Oh, come on. Don't fall. Jesus Christ. I'm gonna try to make this the first stream where I don't drop IG. <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna happen like the earliest. <laughs> the first 10 seconds. Of the okay. Hey, Looks like we're live on IG. We're live on YouTube. How's it going, guys? Uh, we're here for the live show. I got Adam from Major League Airsoft and surprise guest Mark, aka Brand Exploder. Thanks for coming to the studio, guys. I really do appreciate it. Here for the food. Oh. Definitely here for the food. Now. Good food. As you guys on YouTube can see, we got a couple of new guns on the table. On your guys' what is that, left? Yeah, oh wait, yeah. On your guys' left, we got the Classic Army Airsoft GI 15th Edition, uh, 15th Anniversary Edition X9. Comes with the uh, URX rail on it. On your guys' right, our left, we got the Classic Army X9 in black with blue accents. Now, personally, I actually really like the way it came out. I feel like the the mag might be a little bit too much, but you can buy black mags anyways. And uh, these are actually available right now on our website. I believe they're selling for $290, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, link is not in the description. I should add that. But uh, I'll go and drop the link for that in the live chat for you guys and pin it. And then, uh, yeah, that's pretty much everything. A couple things we got going on. We got our mystery gift still going. Uh, anytime you place an order, you'll get a free mystery gift. Could be a patch, shirt, could be a gun, it could be a rail like this guy got. Oh yeah, you got so, a mystery box. I got the uh, block two rail. Oh wow! I Everyone loves. I I cool. ordered a. Uh, what the hell did I order? I ordered something. <laughs> I ordered something, and then oh, I got uh, some gun bags because I was bringing up uh, old classic or uh, not classic army Echo One back to life, uh, with all original parts, and so I wanted that Echo One bag. And what's the bag? Because it's the uh, block two rail. That's better than the bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. So definitely check out our mystery gift system. You could score some good stuff. Uh, other than that, that is the biggest uh, promo we got going on right now. Uh, congrats! Thank you to everyone who pre-ordered the 15th anniversary X9. Uh, we're gonna start shipping them out today. If they don't get out today, we apologize. They'll be shipped out on Monday. Um, but two of you will be receiving uh, gift cards. One of them is gonna be worth $1,000. The other is gonna be worth $1,500. So congratulations to any of you that might got that. One's bigger. Yeah. <laughs> Two. You started. You buried the lead. <laughs> That's right. That is absolutely right. And uh, so I spoke to Frank from Classic Army earlier, and uh, he notified me they got their shipment in, and he made sure we got our stuff in so we can, you know, get the 15th anniversary out. It's been long enough, and uh, we want to get it out. And uh, they kind of took over the sponsorship for today's live show. So I got a few new products to show you guys as well. Uh, these guys haven't seen it yet, but I got couple of them right here. Uh -oh. So, wait a minute, which you. one? Poor a. I know what's in these boxes. IG can't but. see the sweet new guns. So, oh yeah, let's show IG the uh, the new X9s. Go ahead and set that on the table. We'll, we'll do that one second. But uh, IG for you guys here, let me go ahead and flip you around. This is the black and blue accented X9. And that's the 15th anniversary X9. And that's Mark, and that's Adam. I'll be but let's go ahead and flip you guys back around. Don't fall, don't fall, don't fall. Good. Oh, all right. Look at that. I'm getting better at it. <laughs> oh, no, it's, 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 it's so, this. Fresh from the customs. Fresh from customs, fresh straight from Classic Army. Now, this one is a model that's already been released. Uh, and they did another really limited run. Now, you guys are going to see this first, but. Uh, oh, wait, I've got to get this. Oh, my God. Out it's a new way. Classic Army bag. It's a new classic army bag. <laughs> so what do you think, Brain? Your oh, initial oh, reaction. Is that what we're looking at here? Is it back? It's actually an M110. But oh, what's the difference? Eh, it's just a rail. Oh, okay. But let's you know, go ahead and uh, get this out of the way. We were given clues by the uh, magazines on the desk. Oh, it's uh, I didn't even intend for that. That was more for the SR25 that's behind us, but so tan M110 from Classic Army. Incredibly limited release. I think Frank told me that he only has like 
five of these. What? Really limited number. This particular one has the stock on it, and then they do also make a variation with a full stock. Oh, that's the so that uh, these will be going onto our website uh, probably within the hour. And uh, here, go ahead and pick it up. Tell me what you guys oh, think. Oh boy, yep, heavy as expected. I have the airy version, and it feels about the same. Man, I like the tan. On the next. Oh, that's a good question, actually. I wonder if these P-Mags will fit. P-Mags, throwback for all you guys that love some major throwback stuff. It looks like it, yeah. Let's find out. It does big look moment. like it. The big moment of truth. Oh, uh, no. no. I'm not going to force that. Yeah, that ain't that's happening. That's a shame. But, yeah, so we got a tan. So if you're sitting on the pile of old P-Mags, <laughs> bad news for you. But bad news. Everyone else, who cares? Tan M110. Uh, we'll be going live very soon. I'll probably be doing a review on that. Oh, it's got all the trades. Yeah, all right. Ambi controls. Uh, does it have an Ambi bolt catch and release? Yes, it just does have. Ambi dope. Ambi dope. Yep. And that. then the fire selector is oh, also. Yeah, it's got the cutaway on there. Yep. So uh, that is actually capable of full auto. If you wanted to semi lock it, all you gotta do is just switch the, the fire selector and semi lock. It's not that heavy. I mean, must, you must run really light yeah. guns if that's heavy. Of course, man. Plastic Wester Jet 2. Very light. Oh, no, it's not bad. Light on your feet. Only once you get into quad rails, you start heavy yeah. pretty quickly. Yeah. This is my gripe with quad rails. No one's ever mounted anything in their life back here. Yeah. You were carrying that around your whole. Yeah, you are right. You, it's just down here. You might have you know, a grenade launcher that goes flush, but that's it. Yeah. I can't think of anything here, else. Here, and like, open on the front, the lights or the cameras or something. So, Still. I'm really but excited to see these guys. Just love it. to uh, add another Tan SR25 onto the market. But Classic Army, stop doing the limited release. Just make a full production, man. Come on. Yeah, is there no market for those things? What's up with that? I really don't know. I'd buy but it. I would too. If you want something to But sale. I would buy that one, but uh -oh. we got one more here. Is it great? So, this one is another Classic Army bag. Oh! Yeah. But, now I'll let you guys go ahead and tell Do me what y'all think about this one. So it's the full stop version. This is an SR25. So, it's marked M110, but this has the SR25 rail. Ah. Let's go ahead and get this guy out of here. So, we got another uh, SR25 here from Classic Army, but the biggest difference is this guy comes with the ECS system installed. And that one Ooh. That one does not. That's a standard gearbox. This has the ECS trigger in it. For those of you that do not know, the ECS is Classic Army's digital trigger, uh, completely programmable from the trigger. So if you go to events that require uh, 308 design rifles to get that extra FPS boost to be semi-locked, you can do that all from the trigger without having to add a MOSFET to it, add any extra parts to it. It's ready to go out of the box. So right now it's you know standard safe semi-full, and then you can program the safe semi three numbers, uh, semi or three round burst full, five round burst full, and then semi-semi. So you can semi-lock it without having to do anything else to it. You just gotta mess with the settings a little bit. Is that threaded? It looks like it's a separate part. It looks separate. I'm honestly not too sure. But Classic Armor does also make a separate SR25 suppressor that locks into it right there. Oh, okay. that's super long, yeah. crazy yeah. thing. Just like the real one. But those are two new products yeah, that, that, that Classic Army now has. That feels perfect. And they'll both be live on our website here very shortly. That's nice how easy it is to get to, man. The Aries one, you gotta like yeah. do a little jigsaw puzzle to get to the battery. My, I would, the only thing that um, I would change on that is have beam connectors, that's it. Does it have an Same. adapter? Or like, you know, no, it's straight to me. It's okay. straight to me. Yeah. You know, lately it's been a lot of... There's been a lot of people doing adapters, but that one's straight to me. Um, I talked to Frank about why they went back to Tamiya's, and he told me that it's because it's a lot easier to get Tamiya batteries. Like uh, a lot of airsoft retailers just buy straight Tamiya, and then you know the, the end consumer would be the ones having to go through the hassle of rewire everything. I, so mean, I understand where they're coming from, but um, but you can get a deemed like a Tenergy Dean Tener uh, battery for like twelve bucks. I mean, I I run Tenergy batteries on my guns, and they're like twelve ten bucks each. Um, let me let me get this for you guys on IG to see. This is the SR25 with the ECS pre-installed. Oh, Jesus now, Christ. Now that we've spoke, done our uh, shameless plug for our new products that we just got in, we got another topic to talk about, our Milsim events. Now, me and Mark are going to be attending American Milsim Copperhead at the end of this month, start of September. I look forward to that. 
Uh, Adam here, uh, Major League Airsoft, is one of the newer event promoter or newer event coordinators in the area, and uh, he had a few ideas. So, uh, why don't you take us through some of the steps that you would take when planning out a game? Like, what inspires you around you know certain ideas and all that? Uh, well, the first thing is I want. Um, I think that like Lion Claws, um, any American Mill Sam, uh, you Mill Sam West. I think those are fantastic to have, but I think they scare a lot of people away from attending. Um, just due to the amount of rules and the amount of stuff that you need to have, that you need to bring, um, and you know. Yeah, and they vary, but there there's a strictness to all of them to some degree. You can't just wake up that morning and show up to the event. That's no, yeah, definitely. And don't get me wrong, I think they're amazing, and they need they, they still need to exist. There's a place for it, and they should exist. the The problem that 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 I have is I don't see a lot of ways to get people into Milsim easily. Yeah. So my goal for this year and most of next year is going to be getting people into Milsim with easy games uh, that have uh, me and Mark we talked about a little bit uh, about having tiered objective systems. So you know uh, all you have to do is you if you would show up like you would just be all right one uniform color is this side the other uniform color is this side. If you signed up for you know side A but you didn't have the right uniform. Uh, then you would just have to wear a band instead of uh, being able to run with no bands. Um, and the objectives would vary from, you know, if you don't want to do objectives, you can show up, you can shoot, you can have a good time, you can kill people, it'd be a good time. But um, if you want to do objectives, and there would be objectives available. Uh, I've done several different events uh, over the course of this year, and I've seen a lot of what people do right, a lot of what people do wrong. Um, and uh, the main goal is with Major League Airsoft is I'm, I don't I want to be able to interact with with people be able to see what people want uh, see uh, what the airsoft community the direction that they want to go in um, because I don't want to push my agenda that's that's not fair to the player um, because if I push what I want that's not what everyone's gonna want I want to I want this to be this is supposed to be a community so um, I you know this year next year it's all going to be about uh, some really awesome events. While we're talking about this, if you guys have, some, we actually wanted to kind of sample the crowd and see what you guys have as far as ideas. So, I mean, if you've been to a Milsom event or whatever's holding you back from going to your first Milsom event, let us know, and then we could work on incorporating that. So whatever mm -hmm. whatever scares you off, maybe we could address that and make it a you know an easier point of entry for everybody. So if you have ideas for events or things that are keeping you from going to existing events. Just post them right here and we'll discuss them. And um, yeah, we're hoping to put something together that's like, it, we, right now we have pickup games and we have like college basketball or something. There seems to be no in between where, mm -hmm. you know, it's organized, but it's casual. It's either you show up and it's all chaotic and everyone's just doing their own thing, or it's like joining some two day army where you have like rules and regulations and schedule. Yeah, command we, structure. And yeah, we need something in between yeah. where it's like, you know, I, I want some. So then I'm doing working towards a goal, but it's not all strict. Where if I don't have the perfect kit from 1988 Israeli invasion <laughs> of uh, the Gaza Strip or whatever, yeah. I get kicked out of here. So you want something, you know, semi-casual. That's where we're trying to kind of hit that middle yeah. ground that seems to be pretty non-existent right now. Well, and on top of that, also be something you can just do as part of your normal schedule. Just go on a weekend and have fun doing it. Right. Uh, we don't want you know. All, most of these other events, another big uh, thing about them is you show up and you are engulfed in the game from, you know, s as soon as you get there until the second it ends. And there has to be, you know, something to break it up, something else to do. So, uh, and also something that's not going to be so crazy that you're going to want to take, the, you know, the day after off work just to recover from. <laughs> so. We'll go ahead and start taking some questions from IG and YouTube. I found this format works a little bit better, like talk about the topic, take some questions so people don't like get uneasy and then continue to talk about the topic. Mm -hmm. uh, Kirby's underscore airsoft asks, do you get the rail with the pre-order that was placed back in February? Yes, uh, if you place a pre-order back in February, I'm assuming you're talking about the 15th anniversary that's about when they originally went up. Uh, that is going to be the one you're getting. You're getting uh, pretty much everything you get to stand with a gun. So gun, magazine, speed loader, and an additional six magazines battery and charger for the 15th anniversary so that's going up uh those are going out starting today and then whatever doesn't ship out today will for sure ship out monday uh let's see if we got anything else here question wise because uh 
we're still waiting for their feedback on like in between or yeah. those some of that. It's kind of a, like a long, long discussion topic, so yeah. it's not going to be a quick, you know. Work. Yeah. Uh, so airsoft underscore Oxfordshire is asking. So I'm looking for a good CPB gun with a tracing unit. What would you suggest, Mark? What would you suggest? Well, I personally don't know one, but I've heard nothing but good things about the Scorpion Evo. Um, I think it's a thread a bit on the front, a ton of trigger, all that stuff mm -hmm. you want, and it's short, like real short. But I mean, since we're here and we have this on the table, I don't see <laughs> any reason you wouldn't want this. It's got all the same stuff I just mentioned. Plus, it's a lot more affordable. Those scorpions are like in the 400s? I think it's fours? 360 is what yeah. it starts at. And then the carbines are four. It used to be at 500 when it first came out. So the mags the mags also only come in three packs. Too. And it's, it's like, like, what, 40, 40 bucks? 40 or 50 bucks for a three pack of mags. So it's a little yeah, pricey to get into. That's pretty decent. Yeah. Mm. It's up to like 17 bucks. But if you only want that one mag, yeah. you can't buy singles. That's, 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 I don't know, that's a little irritating to me personally. Yeah. And um, then, uh, well, it isn't like a standard 14 month counterclockwise. Like you have to buy an adapter for it. Oh. Yeah, so it's a little proprietary. Adam, what about you? What would you go with? I'm a fan of PDWs. Uh, I just started, uh, I just finished my build of one. Um, and X9 is a good place to start. Lancer Tactical is a good place to start. Um, I mean, the Evo is good. Um, the nice thing about, uh, well, I don't know. I mean, I guess I guess it really... <laughs> it's a very broad answer. It, it is a very broad answer. I mean, if you're looking for something short, something like this it would be excellent. Uh, if you're looking for um, something that fits all roles, I mean, you can't go wrong with something like an Apex or a Nemesis or a uh, um, G&G has some good stuff, too. Uh, ARP9, obviously. ARP9, <laughs> too, yeah. So, I mean, me personally, uh, pretty much anything with, like, a shorter barrel... Uh, I'm not too picky on what's yeah, Especially if you're adding the tracer now, you can yes. add yeah, extra yeah, six yeah. inches or something in the front, so you want to start real short. No, so yeah, yeah, definitely. Kind of back to medium. But Actually, yeah. but there are the hop up units that have tracer, uh, True. The tracer things in it. Yeah. I don't know how well they work, but you know there there is there's, also that. There's option. rumor of hop up units that have tracers. I've never heard anyone. You never you never heard of that? No, I've heard of existing, but I've never seen it in practical use. I've never seen anyone in the field running one. So we're actually working on something. I can't talk detail about it, right, but tell, tell us the exact dimensions. It, it involves a. Uh, it could potentially involve a tracer unit built in with or hop up unit built in tracer unit. And is that the one I'm thinking of? Probably, okay. and it can keep up with a really, really high oh, rate of fire that's powered off of a separate battery. Can it keep up with a spinning barrel? It can keep up with <laughs> <laughs> a rotating well, barrel. Well, if you have a hop up unit for each of those barrels, sure. Well, oh, wow. I don't see why not. But uh, it can keep up with like a 80 round DSG or 80 RPS DSG. What? Yeah. So I'll have to uh, talk to some people and get you, get <laughs> oh you, crap. see how that looks. <laughs> right. But uh, we're, that's in the works right now. Um, and then, uh, but gun-wise, uh, I'm really not picky. It's, just, it's a shorter gun. Like I, I'd be totally cool running either of these X9s. Um, I'd be cool doing like a uh, like the new AR4 from Classic Army with like the four-inch barrel. Uh, even like a uh, even like a shorter gas pullback rifle, like uh, yeah, like like a shorter LM4. I've seen a few of those. The KR5, the KR5, MP7. uh, MP7s, MP7s, MP9s. Uh, even what, throw back to the, the uh, out, yeah. throw back to the GHK G5s. Those are pretty dope. Yes, kind of like an Evo knockoff, but and if you want them shorter, there's a bullpup kit for it. Yeah, definitely. But uh, yeah, so I'm I'm not too picky when it comes to the CPB guns. And then tracer units wise, you can go something cheap. You can go like Lancer Echo One. Uh, if you want to step up from that, but you don't want to spend like premium dollar, you can go Classic Army. Uh, I think Ace Tech and Exor Tech started around the $80, $90 dollar price point. Mm -hmm. uh, G and G are some really good ones, uh, and then Ace Tech makes some like really high end stuff too. That can feed like really high stuff. Oh yeah, and Ace Tech has those mini tracers the now. Like, yeah, they're like, 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 like two pistols. inches or something. Yeah, yeah. but you could th easily throw it on here. And yeah, you're not adding much length to your gun. You're trying to keep it short. If you can find them, I found the best ones are actually Tokyo Marui. But those are really hard to find now. I, think, I think they sell for like two hundred bucks. Yeah, so, Jesus but Christ. But they're they're really good. They seem to be the, the only ones that were around for a while. Now everyone's kind of cut on the market. Really, has flooded in the last year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see here. Have you have you used them outdoor during the daytime? Tracers? Oh, sweet. Uh, oh, one of the you? other. One of the I other just don't know how how well they light up. GI guys dropped in the no. prices on the guns. So the SR25 with the ECS trigger is three ninety nine. 
So about 400 bucks, and you get all the same features. Only a little bit more than the rest of the Nemesis series. And then just make sure it's cheaper than the Ares. And then the tan one, uh, standard, I believe this is like the Pro-Line gearbox that's in it, is selling for 370 So there are your prices on that. Thank you. Shout out to whatever employee was actually like watching out for me, giving me the prices on that. Thank you very much. Let's see here. Let's get one more question, and we'll hop on to the next topic here. Thoughts on the KDW Ronin Six? Uh, so the Ronin, as far as uh, from what I've, mm -hmm. I've noticed, is that a lot of the uh, some of the Ronins have had wiring issues lately. Hmm. Um, is this a quick change upper thing? Or is this it's, it's not because of that. Quick change, because that that hasn't uh, been a thing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, quick change entire upper receiver. You're looking at like what 100 and something for the entire. It, but regardless, I do. Th I I remember hearing um, I was talking with some guys because uh, I was dealing with my RM4 and uh, the Ronins are apparently having wiring issues. Um, and I believe that is down to uh, the gate, the, the type of wire that they use. Um, I tried to put a 11-1 through my exhaust. Arm for wiring, and uh, they got real hot, real fast. Change uppers. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Whoa. It's not but yeah, uh, innovation. If you, they're 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 good guns. Don't get me wrong. KW makes a, a reasonable product, but also proprietary. Well, yeah. Did you guys test fire that thing in your shootout? And the yeah. Test so and you hit it. yeah. <laughs> I, okay. So we did the top four AG shootout and. Uh, we talked to one of the KDWA reps, and there's a break-in period for the bucking, and we weren't going to sit there and waste a 1,000 rounds to get it broken in. But um, whenever I shot it, the rounds would go like 20 <laughs> feet and then just die for no reason. But when he shot it, it shot like as straight as you could possibly be. Like, I think you hit three out of five on the last like 200-foot yeah. target, which is like, it performed better than all the other guns in the test. But it's like, when I'm shooting it, it goes 20 feet and then drops. It's like, what the hell's going on here? And I, yeah. That that wasn't scripted. I actually lost my my stuff. <laughs> yeah, it was entertaining. But yeah, I mean, they, they performed good. I mean, you know, there's always going to be an internal discussion between uh, RM4 and recoil shock. Uh, I would be more inclined towards recoil shock because there are parts for it. Uh, whereas Did you guys YouTube right this one, that one, yeah, that one. Uh, yeah, I recoil shock may be superior in terms of parts, but. I like the recall on my arm for so. Yeah, it wiggles more. Yeah, it yeah, wiggles yeah. a little bit more. Uh, no, no disrespect to KWA. They they make really good products. I, I ran an LM4 for like two years, and it, it was a, a really solid rifle. I, I did one upgrade to it internally, and it was done. Um, and it it's they make really good stuff. Uh, the arm fours are good guns. Uh, I do have some gripes here and there. But that's just me. Uh, but um, you know. It, it is what it is, and they're they're good guns. I, I got no issue with them personally. So I just like to mess with Adam here, and I like to mess with uh, John out there at KWA. Hi, John. <laughs> Your thoughts on the KWA? Uh, well, I have the Scorpion from them, and it's a really great little SMG. I I love it. Sometimes I run it as a secondary in the hip holster. Hmm. Totally, totally great. I'm sure it's nothing to do with any of this really it's probably <laughs> ksc whatever rebranded but that's no, my main experience mix on stuff with the kw and i like it a lot i would definitely recommend this for oh, speaking of smgs man that's that gun is awesome for cqb no yeah it's definitely. like this long and mm. yeah it, it just it's a little bus size like mm. full auto just dumps it in like one second it dumps a 20 around man yeah, those are absolute monster. Pretty much anything that small can be great in CQB. Mm -hmm. um, That's so really the place for gas, in my opinion. Like, definitely. You're out in the long field, you're trying to snipe with gas. Oh. So you're going to have a bad time. But CQB, I, I CQB have a good CQBs. time with my own for it. Actually, uh, if, if you're using a Tanaka, then you'll have good good luck with long free band you're Tanaka. Like but you're only. talking about Tanaka, so. Free band Tanaka. Yeah, like free band with Tanaka. With the unregulated uh, CO2 mags, you can get those things shooting <laughs> pretty hard. So, uh, next topic that we got going on. Me and Adam are actually working on another top five video. Uh, this one's gonna be between SMGs. Now, uh, we Scorpion. Scorpion's gonna be out there for sure. Uh, we we haven't agreed on what to do exactly, but Scorpion's gonna for sure be up there. The Vector will sure be up there. Uh, Electric Vector. Yeah, because the the gas one's discontinued, so right. it's like it's hard to throw that in the Well, you're going gas versus electric. Nice start. Honestly, we yeah. could, we could probably do a separate list on gas. PWs yeah, and SMGs. To choose from. But uh, 
for sure Vector and Scorpion are going to be on there. Uh, we're undecided on what the other models will be. X9. X9. So the X9 is technically a PCC, like pistol caliber carbine, but we're going to throw it in there anyway. So the X9 will be in there. ARP9 will be in there. Uh, and we're like a P90, but who makes a good P90? It's true. It's hard to get P90. Tokyo Marine, do they still make their P90? They do, but they're harder to get in the States because of the FF trades. Yeah, um, that's true. Yeah. And Cybergun's been kind of quiet lately, so. Um, Classic Army used to make one a million years ago. But again, Cybergun still has the trades in the US, so oh, right. you know, they can't come in. There's a GBB um, P90, but that's a whole different yeah. that's, a, that's another story, yeah. And then, the MP5, I mean, oh, yeah. MP5 is yeah. just that such a classic, new, man. Elite Force. Yeah. Metal. We, oh, Avalon that's Charles. right. That they do have the Avalon Charles. Nigel, call me. <laughs> but, um, Come on in on this, Nigel. But yeah, so you know, because I actually had a, we have a VFC MP5 from years ago that we've just kept in the, the marketing room, and uh, that was going to be used, but I completely forgot about the new Avalon internal ones. So that's definitely going to probably be our next. That's a pretty exciting product. I, I definitely need to talk to him. That's not like falling apart. Oh, in Nigel, Cliff, up. one of you two, call me. We, we need to get that out here. Yeah. Send the A5 while you're at it, too. I want to see that. But, yeah, the MP5, um, you know, I, Rainbow's, like, from Rainbow Six One, that's just been, like, one of my favorite guns. And uh, it's just a shame that there's... Yeah, all their soft versions have been some kind of... I, well, I have a Marui one, it just doesn't feel good. It's yeah, but it's like... Freaky and plastic -y. I mean, years ago, before, like, HK... Or before the trademark infringement was really a big thing in the airsoft industry, you had a ton of people making them. Mm. Like, you had uh, ICS, G&G, &G, &G, Classic Army, Marui... Um, I'm sure there's more brands I'm missing too, but Echo, oh, Echo, no, yeah, Echo, Echo, Echo One, one had one. Um, I, I actually owned one for a little bit. Yeah, but there was a ton of companies that made them, and then HK, you know, the trademark infringement thing came out. Elite Force started cracking down on everyone, and uh, now it was just the uh, the VFC, like the one that we still have, and then uh, they had like a competition line too that they came out with recently, oh, yeah. the SD5 and SD6. All the little yeah, it's, it's like the, the lower end one. That's why we didn't really want to put it up there. But uh, I could there is the Apache. Which one's that? The Wii uh, Apache. Oh, that's right. That's a gas ball back though. Yeah, but that's the only other one that I know of. Mm, true. Yeah, 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 we're gonna be doing be perfect. top five SMGs. So we have no particular. I don't have a particular right now. I don't have time to think about that. I mean, anything else up here? That's not, well, actually, you save your answer because that's what the video is gonna be about. But, hey, what about that thing, that, the GAD? That's kind of up there. True. Oh, yeah. the it's a Tech yeah. 9, yeah. Do they start making Max for those again? Yeah. yeah we got Max for yeah, So mids, highs, and the, uh, the drum Max, too. Interesting. Could also talk about the Spectre, which is the... Because uh, I remember they stopped making those for a long ass time. The RDP is what it's called for, for Oh, right. Yeah. The gun no one wanted. <laughs> those are cool, though. I, I actually have one. I think they have those a those guns that comes out, you like... Look at yeah, it. it is. Oh shit! It is. I mean, oh, like oh, the oh, second oh. I saw it drop, I was like, "Oh, that's the Spectre from Black Ops One." COD. <laughs> yeah, but they COD coming like, in clutch. Is that a fake gun? <laughs> no, it's it's a gun. you know, yeah, CZ yeah. is not known for their authenticity. He's not wrong. Before Black, and okay, before the new one is like just the new one. Butt, and when they go in the future, yeah. Guns. <laughs> but if you're talking like COD Two to Black Ops One or yeah. Modern Warfare Three, it's all it's all real stuff. I mean, even in Modern Warfare 3, they got Remington to sign on for uh, for giving them the license to edit into their games. The that game was garbage. Man. You don't like Modern Warfare 3? No. Eh. It looked worse than Modern Warfare 2. In my okay, the, the campaign was good. I was going <laughs> to I was oh, oh, about no. the multiplayer. All right, this is a discussion that's going to go in an entirely different direction. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll save this for another day. We'll, we'll do a Twitch stream. <laughs> but anyways, back to SMG. So yeah, you right. guys let us know what you guys think are the top five SMGs in the market right now. AGs. Or AGs. Or AGs. AEGs. Preferably AEGs. We'll save gas for another day. Yeah. But uh, top five SMG AEGs available on the market right now. So none of that. Uh, I don't even know what to discontinue. Yeah, yeah. AEGs. Don't throw some like, Oh, back in the eighties, they used to make a, oh, yeah, the first. a micro Uzi from Classic Army. <laughs> Is there an Uzi AEG? There's a CO2. Didn't Tony Okova make one? They probably did, some. but they probably only made like There's those old Marui ones where it's like you put AAA batteries in it and you feed oh, it through the top. Yeah, but that's, yeah, there's, where you there's have like a whole other universe. <laughs> yeah, oh, the, 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 the big red five dot, guns. The red dot is where the BBs are stored. <laughs> <laughs> it's gravity fed. Yeah, that one's probably not going to be in the competition. The only gun I remember from uh, Sport Chalet, like guns that they made, those seats or plastic ones, was the, they called it the Super 9. It was a, an M24. Uh, that had uh, uh, shells injected. Oh, 
Well, I don't know. Yeah. That, that was Sports was, Chalet. It's, yeah. Sports Chalet, hey, they, they, they paid. Pretty, I mean, I got, I, my first airs, for that. I got my first airsoft gun at a Big Five. So. Was it C3? It was a C3 in 1911. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, man, that thing was great in the backyard. Yeah, it hit cannons yeah, for days. He wouldn't be over here right now. That's right. See, that's the thing. With airsoft guns, you have a lot of entry points. You can mm -hmm. go... You could go like GBLS or something, which is basically oh, no. Milson West. I would say it's like super realistic, super expensive, super hardcore. I wouldn't. Around that. I wouldn't use a GBLS in Milson West. But well, I wouldn't well, use a gas blowback in Milson West. Events to guns, how there's like <laughs> True. how there's like high end events, yeah. you know, super immersive. The same thing with guns, but we have like an in between with guns, where with events it's all either big five guns or you got GBLS or whatever. Mm -hmm. There's no or system or whatever. There's no like. Two hundred dollar Lance Attack, though, and that's kind of what we're trying to go for, like no, two hundred dollar Lance Attack. What are you talking about no two hundred dollar Lance Attack, dude? You're, you're not paying attention because you're messing with the comments. I'm <laughs> sorry for doing my job. Comparing events to guns, I'm saying events. At least either this end or that end. Yeah. yeah. So that's basically as if you had to buy either a stem up or a see through gun. True. But there's no events that are basically equivalent to like a classic Arvidemus, where it's like. You know, mid tier. Mid tier, yeah, you could get in. It's well, you know, casual, but it's still performance, so that's what we're trying to do with mm -hmm. events. Do you, you like, consider Nemesis like casual performance? Because, like, the. the compared, compared to okay, a GBLS so, or a Sistema, uh, yes. yes. Okay, so yes. GBLS and Sistema are very niche markets. Like, I don't know many people that would be willing to drop $1,000 straight away on a gun. He's not on board with my analogy no, of no. events to guns. No, but that's what I mean, though. It's like, I've seen beginners go to Milson West. I went, the last Milson West I went to, there's a dude, that's his second time playing airsoft. That, that's not the, that's he's, not the point. <laughs> that's like that's not the point. I, I, I'm failing to see the, the point here, but I <laughs> <Okay>. apologize. <laughs> we, we get it. We, we get it, at least. You guys get it. I'm still out. Okay. You'll, you'll explain to me. He's like, you should buy a plastic gun. At the end of all this, the Nemesis <laughs> is the best gun ever. <laughs> that's what I got out of it, right? Hey, man, they're good guns. <laughs> but uh, somebody just asked on the live stream, at Tariq.Borik, what are your thoughts? On the no, actually, I haven't, I haven't seen. Can I get a free gun yet? What? But now that you said it, they're probably going to oh, ask. Yeah, thanks. So thanks, you can man. provide a free gun. All right, all right, guys. Everybody gets a free X9. Woo. I'm like Oprah <laughs> over here. Are you, are you buying them? You get an X9. I'm not coming out of my jet. You get an X9. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Avalon? Uh, amazing. You get so, shot at. For those of you that haven't seen it yet, I mean, the Avalon did win his top AG pick. So the the way that I'm going to say it is. When I look at guns, I look at gun stock. If a gun can't perform stock, why? Like, why should you even consider it? Why should you buy it? Why should I even look at it? Um, and the Avalon outperformed all the other guns we shot, including the LVOA. Um, and the fact that you can get that performance is amazing, and that's that's what I want to see. I don't want to see, you know, rebrands of this, or I don't want to see, um, like, these super high price tags and you get something like oh it's so amazing and you know there's something else that's like two hundred dollars that performs better than that um and you know the avalon is that that's where it's at in my opinion right right as of right now the avalon is if i was looking at an m4 right now on the market or like AG. a 416 style aeg i would get the avalon because for price over to performance a over a price tag yes price tag, i was like the top of the mountain for everybody. That's what everybody thought of, like this. Un unpopular opinion. I've I've never been a huge fan of Crytek. Like well, they, me, me and you are, are sort of on the same page there. I'm, I'm not. Let me get your opinion on the the Avalon before I go to my opinion on it. Well, I personally never shot it, but from again everything I've seen, you guys, anybody else doing a review, it seems good. And they're putting all those internals into everything. They must be good. The 416s coming mm -hmm. out with the new. Uh, and they're not proprietary. They're not proprietary. Uh, the, uh, I just saw it at uh, the last event that at Leaf Force, and we were at, I'm not going to say what event it was. Uh, hmm. Irrelevant. 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 Irrelevant, <laughs> Irrelevant. yeah. But uh, it was the Gladius, that's what it was called. They're bringing back the Knights Army PDWs Rest with the Avalon Ooh. internals, and they're calling it the Gladius. So I'm really excited about that. I really like the look of those a lot. Yeah. I remember when those came out, like the first time that that PDW came out, everybody made one. Yeah. Literally everybody made one. We, we made a gas one. Uh, uh, BFC produced the original one. And there was another one. That, Lancer followed suit with their plastic one, and then I think SEMA OEM their metal one for like two hundred bucks with the night trades on it too. And then did did EMG uh, buy the rights oh, to have oh, that though? Yeah. I EMG, I'm not sure the the whole deal that they had with it. 
But I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, I don't know that's PDW thing. Yeah, because Z-Shot is the one who has the, the Knight's traits. Okay. That, that's the, the deal. And whoever they sell the traits to to produce guns is kind of who's making it right now. And Elite Force got that electric MP7 coming out, too. I don't know according how far to, the way that is. According to Nigel, that show. was like as pre-production as they come. That was literally like... Like it's three years out. That was like off the, the <laughs> plane, like on the way to SHOT Show. Like fresh. Somebody assembled mm. it so, like that morning. Probably. So according to him, that's that's probably going to be at SHOT Show next year and they're talking about releasing the following year. So that's probably not going to be ready for the next like two years. It's not ready for your top five AG, not yet. SMG comparison. No. <laughs> not yet. So we have to start like putting a date on these because somebody like 10 years from now is going to yeah. watch like, man, all those guns are garbage. <laughs> yeah. But... Uh, the, the Avalon is an incredible series. Uh, I'm a huge fan of them personally. I prefer the Sabre over the Caliber just because it's a standard M4 and it's more uh, customizable. But uh, the bronzing is beautiful on those. We shot the black one. Um, and then you do get all the upgrades in, out of the box and it's 100% upgradable. Um, I also love the QRS stuff. Yeah. Uh, when he named the top five before we actually filmed it, I was like, you know what? One and two could go either way. I'm not mad about the decision. Um, but for me, one and two would be that or the Nemesis, just because the the Nemesis has the programmability and adaptability out of the box, as opposed to everything else you kind of got to swap parts out. Now, another thing, too, is the Nemesis is 100% ambi, as opposed to, I think it's the only 100% ambi gun on that list. Well, the, with the Nemesis, too, you also have the the magnets for the gears you have to always yeah so you just got to move those over the new one but um i talked to the techs that have swapped a few gear sets out on those and they say it's not hard to get the magnets onto your gears uh and then the hop up unit is proprietary to classic army so that's another hindrance on it so um there are pros and cons to both of them but i i could put either one at one or two i mean it's it's honestly interchangeable mm -hmm. and in my opinion so let's see here anything new let's Oh, we things. got the Airsoft Amigos in here. Tim, what's up, G.I. Joe's? Oh, what's nice. up, Tim? Shout out, form, or, uh, I don't even want to. Yeah. Former Red Wolf Tim. So I, I, There's no other way to put it. For, <laughs> sorry, Tim, love you, but what's up? How's it going? Let's see if we got anything going on YouTube. Uh, yeah, Tim's actually one of the reasons why I started to get back there, because I started seeing a lot of Red Wolf videos, and because uh, I love their, love their site. There's just so many interesting things Easy to find buddy. on See you. Uh, but, yeah, I, I uh, yeah, watching those it made me want to really get back into it. So that was pretty awesome. Jeremiah Coulson asks, "What fairly cheap upgrade should I go or do to my GC16 Predator internally?" What do you want to do? Yeah. Barrel and bucking and nub are like the easiest upgrades you can do, and you'll see instant results from it. Yeah. Um, you go with a really solid barrel. You can go with like Pro Me if you have the money for it. Um, PDI is good. Mad Bulls are good. Lone X are good. A lot of people talk. Uh, crap about Poseidon, but if you need, if I if you Poseidon. if you don't have the money for a Prometheus or a PDI barrel, Poseidon's not actually that bad. I got a Poseidon on Rui, with really good barrels. So uh, Poseidon barrel and Rui bucking it up. That's really great range. Nice. Yeah. If you're shooting hot, go with a white bore. That's one quick way to knock down the FPS. And if you got all that extra air coming out, might as well fill the white bore with it. Let's see here. Question. Any questions? Any questions? What's up? I was just on the YouTube live show. Oh, welcome to the IG live show. Oh, this guy's double streaming. Yeah, it's like I literally have an IG squad that hops on the YouTube squad from time to time. <laughs> it's like they'll just switch places. Uh, do you guys still have the X9 with blue trim in stock? Yeah. These are in stock right now. Sorry, cutting your face off there, Adam. But in stock right now. You can get them on our website, like 290 I believe. But check them out. They're dope. Uh, can Even the hop off is blue, as we've discovered. <laughs> it matches the rest of the gun. Hey, can y'all talk about if there's a plan to do Milsom in the southern states like Alabama and Mississippi, Louisiana, since the nearest one are in Texas? You actually just missed uh, Desert Fox events uh, Southern Strike. That was at Camp Shelby in uh, Mississippi over there. I'm not too sure what city in Mississippi, but that was down in Mississippi. Uh, follow Desert, Desert Fox events. Desert Fox is probably the closest to that in between right now. I think so. Then, I mean, it's a little bit of commitment. Yeah. It's like a three day thing. But yeah. it's still, if you know, you show up and you have some blue on you, and they're like, ah, that's cool. <laughs> whatever gun, whatever sort of gear. I mean, for right now, I'm focused on just local area. Yeah, yeah. But, but 
the the goal will hopefully be. Uh, yeah, but it's all, it's only local if you live near. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. California is a good place to start because we just have such a buzzing community here. That's Very why, condensed. That's why you're in Alabama or something. You're like, somebody please bring something here because otherwise you got to drive 200 miles. To yeah. No, yeah, place. definitely. Yeah. Uh, when I was at the Desert Fox in Boulevard, Missouri, like that was a really small community and it had a good turnout for it. And everybody I talked to was like, yeah, I drove three hours to get here. I drove like six hours to get here. Yeah. David Lee from Oklahoma drove up and that was like a 12 hour drive to go to that event. Alphonse and his buddy drove from Michigan to go to that event, <laughs> and Damn. you know, like it, it draws people in. Like if you run big events in the middle of nowhere, like people will flock to it because that area generally doesn't have anything big. Yeah, and so yeah, like, that's a good thing about hold, hosting somewhere where there's not a thriving yeah. community. You could probably find some. Re- there's probably some fantastic venues to host oh, events sure. too. Probably yeah. abandoned this, old this, some factory that knows some town that's just a ghost town. Now you just that yeah. would be sick. A whole town for an mm. a real yeah. town. That would be dope. You guys think in California airsoft is so popular because the gun culture is so destroyed? Yes. I think it's popular because all the ports are here and all the retailers are here. Because if you think about it, like I'm not going to name any names. You guys, oh, well, with internet names. now, that's not really a big factor. If you well, want something, it take you an extra day for it to ship yeah. from California to Alaska or something. No, that's other. that's the thing though. That's why I think that it's bigger in California because before, like, we're in the golden age of online sales right now. But you know, ten years ago when everything was starting out. And, you know, nobody cared about internet shopping. Like everyone's mm-hmm. like, right. like sketch out about people doing that. To go to a store. People walked into physical stores, and because the ports are you know an hour away, like you have all these stores popping up. Like it, this literally is the melting pot of airsoft for the U.S. Yeah, and so yeah. like, I'd say it's two things. I think one, it's already established here. Yeah, and there's shops already here, and for someone to break into the industry, it's not easy. No, no like no. to to like actually show someone that you're serious, be able to uh, like start getting to a point where you can actually make a profit off of selling stuff and if you don't have a shop near you then there's not going to be a field near you so there's a whole bunch of things that need to happen or for a field or something to actually grow outside of california it's just there's so much here already that um we're just blessed to have well, we just have, we like, have. I said, like you're saying we have a built-in sort of structure from when it used to be yep. all you know oh, all store. Store. Yeah. But, but it is also do you think now with online there's just a delay till it gets this way everywhere um, I still feel like California is going to be the home of Airsoft just because everything is out here. Because even though you might have, you know, people ordering from all over the country, they're still shipping from this area. Yeah, but I mean, if, if we everyone sh- in Oklahoma who's interested in Airsoft has an Airsoft gun. Is that the biggest paintball from- event in, in Oklahoma? Yeah. Like some giant World War II recreation thing that's like absolutely nuts? I think I, it's somewhere in the Great Lakes area. I thought there was because they do like a D Day reenactment. But even then, it's not in California. No, no but what, to your I, point, yeah, like it, there's massive events that happen outside of California. They may not be airsoft, but I think that as the industry grows more, um, I think that there and as uh, online shopping is easier, and also as it's easier for a shop to get started, I think that we'll see a larger growth across the country. I think that's that's the biggest, and also um, that's good for everyone. Yeah, and a lot of other states like Jesus. If you're in Oklahoma, you're like, yeah, I want to start a, uh, an airsoft facility. And they like, actually right, just cool, opened a, uh, an indoor field in Oklahoma City. Shout out to Ten Eight Airsoft. We were at their grand wow. opening. Uh, like July twenty eighth. Become our scapegoat for everything. Like, <laughs> they're like, we're doing airsoft. What are you talking about? Yeah, shout was, out to Ten Eight. There, <laughs> my uh, my my extended family's out there. Did you go to Ten Eight Airsoft? <laughs> they, they literally just opened like less than you know a month ago but uh, they're a brand new field over in Oklahoma City go ahead and check them out um, let's see what else we got going on oh, man I mean SS Airsoft has been around for they just had like their 8th year anniversary or their 7th year I, I forget but the you know, established um, people are established yeah. like the people that are already out I think that they are already like ready to go they're outside of California in California um, I've seen a number of stores die uh, like one of the stores I used to go to all the time was Strike Airsoft, and they had a unique, uh, like they did a lot of cool stuff. They did, uh, oh Jesus Christ, what was the name? Uh, Operation Cypress, where they worked with the U.S. Army to provide players that were going to be up for for uh, infantry oh, wow. training. It's like fun. there's a lot of cool stuff that they did, but they don't exist anymore. And I think that uh, in California, it is a lot harder to start because it's more oh, expensive. Yeah. There's so many okay. regulation, all that other stuff. And all these other guys like SS Airsoft, like they, they're 
in a community that is already used to that sort of thing, and you know they're one of the few providers of that. So you know they're they're going to still be a titan in the area that they're at. No, yeah, definitely. They're it, it's easier to break into the airsoft scene outside of California, but you still have to have the the local interest to do it because anybody can do online shopping. You just order inventory from a distributor and just start selling on your garage. Yeah. Um, but in order to establish like a store that's going to last, you need an airsoft community in your area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if there's a good community going but that doesn't have a local store, then you could potentially have a, a viable spot to open a, a store at. Well, what about the whole idea of even having walk-in stores? Like, is that a thing of the past? Amazon is like walking stores and they're the number one booming it, retailer in America. It honestly way. depends on what you're ordering though because Amazon sells a lot of stuff that you buy just for general stuff. Like most of the Amazon stuff I order are like movies, uh, like supplies or general stuff. But if I'm looking at buying like a TV, I'm going to walk to a Best Buy and buy oh, like what that's see but, but see, that's... No, because you can actually physically see the differences between all these products in person. But that is, that's just you though. Like, yeah. I'm the same way. I'll, I'll, I'll look at the specs. There's the resolution. There's the whatever uh, yeah. size, dimensions. I'm like, I'll go measure my wall. All right, it's perfect. It shows up. Yeah. And usually exactly what you expect. You go wait and, you know, buy the mount for it. It's all right there. It's only if I need it right then and there then I'll go to the yeah, store. Yeah, and then you're like, 25 bucks for an HDMI cable? What the heck? Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, the, the one good thing that I can say about local airsoft stores is a community that yeah, they grow. that you can't really foster on, on an internet store. Yeah. And I mean, you know, small stores, you get loyal customers that come in all the time, you get to talk shop, you get to become friends with the people that are there. That is essential to having a thriving airsoft uh, brick and mortar store. And that's also something that, uh, you know, it brings other people that like airsoft together. Like, you might be at the store picking something up, there might be another dude there trying to get a gun fixed, and then you start talking, and then you're like, hey, where are you playing this weekend? And then you go play with that person that yeah. weekend, and then you'll, you know, maybe you'll become friends and you'll, you know, make a squad with other people you've met at the store. So I think that brick and mortar stores for airsoft is important, but it depends on uh, whether or not that, you know, there is enough of a population for that to succeed. Right. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, that's probably the biggest thing that I miss about working in the storefront is, you know, that community interaction is that every single day I'm talking to new people that are in the immediate area. And then I'll let them know, like, hey, I'm going to this field on Sunday if you want to come join us. And then, you know, they end up showing out there. And you make a lot of friends doing that. Like, the majority of my friends I've met, like, from working in the store. And I still talk to them regularly. There are people that are either, um, you know, regulars here. Uh, they end up getting a job at a field somewhere. They end up getting a job at another place in the industry, whether it's a manufacturer or another retailer. And there's there's no love lost there. Like we're still friends at the end of the day. And it's like, you know, uh, the last event I went to, I I knew people at every single venue <laughs> there. And it's like, it's like how did how did this happen? But like in in the past two years, I've been working at GI. The my amount of love for the game has just grown exponentially because of that community interaction and that. You just can't replace that with online shopping. Yeah. It's like, I, I think some industries are like meant to have a physical store, and I think this is one of the few industries mm -hmm. that, that definitely is going to come with it. Yeah, the, the majority of sales are going to go to online stuff where people can't physically come down here to California, Texas, or Virginia, wherever you might be out in the country, but there's always going to be a place for a brick and mortar store. Uh -huh. so, uh, let's see here. Timberwolf Airsoft asks Classic Army EC, this is a long one, Classic Army EC2. G and G GC sixteen Predator, A and K M sixteen A three, Crytac Mark II CRB, and CMM fourteen. If you're making us choose between those five, <laughs> the Crytac's gonna wow, win it because it? the other four are completely different class. Yep. Is an M fourteen in there for some reason? <laughs> well, it's yeah, a CMM fourteen, not even like a, a G and G or a classic army with higher end stuff. But uh, yeah. It, okay, let's get rid of the Crytac because that's the clear winner in that one. What would you choose between the four of those? I wouldn't the Predator be better than the. The Predator is considered like a mid-tier gun. Really? I, mean, I don't know much about G and G's personally. Like the Predator has like their older ET unit, so it's not like the newest G two upgrade, but it's like the generation before that. So it's not bad. I'd say it's comparable to the classic army as far as trigger response goes, because the EC two does have the ECS in it now. Uh, yeah, let's, we gotta go ahead and wrap it up here. So we'll do one more question. But of those, I'd say Predator or EC2. 
Just because yeah. you want to be unique? <laughs> will, will you know what stuck out to me, kind of, like I something out an F4? You know what? Why not? I'll, the M14, just because, be different. <laughs> just don't work on it. Don't ever take that gearbox apart. Oh, it's oh, never done oh, back oh, together. Oh, no. <laughs> Hopefully it shoots laser out of the box, because that's how, that's it. You're done. Uh, Could change the barrel, but... Yeah, that's also... That's, <laughs> that's risky? The whole thing is like a nightmare. I don't know some kind of tortured artist <laughs> put the thing together. I wanted to torture people and try to upgrade their M14. See, you put a unit in there and be done uh, I need to get you a good question for this last one, and then uh, we'll get you out of here. Questions at? Let's see, Mark Scootrach, if I can find your question, then sure. Uh, is the LVOAC a good gun out of the box? Avalon over the LVOA. If we're talking about just the LVOA, yeah, it's a, a really good gun. Crytax do make reliable internals, but for the price point you're paying, you could get a better gun for less money. If you want trades, then you want trades and we can't talk you out of that, then yeah, go with the LVOA. If you're looking for a sheer performance, you can save money with the uh, Avalon or Nemesis and get better performance. Yeah, I never fully understood the LVOA craze with the long rail. It's like the division. I, I, yeah, I think the division's what kicked yeah. it off, honestly. Okay. I, didn't play I mean, game everyone game. played it for a day and then no one played it. <laughs> yeah, it was like the hardest <laughs> game for a week. I played it until I got blasted from like four blocks away by a vector. <laughs> I, I immediately shut my Xbox off took the game out, put it in the box, oh, and sold it, sold it to GameStop for $4. <laughs> wow. For $5.50 if I put the credit towards a pre-order, but Jesus I wanted the cash. Christ. You wanted that cash. <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted that cash because I hated that game. I was like, nope, I'm done. This game's ridiculous. <laughs> so thanks, you guys, tuning in. Mark, Adam, thanks for joining me. I always appreciate it. Make sure you guys check out our website, airsoftgi.com, and get your hands on the Blue X9 here. Thank you to Classic Army for sponsoring today's episode. Also check out the uh, SR25 and the M110 available now. 400 for the ECS uh, SR25, 370 for the 10 M110 right here. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks again for getting, tuning in. Uh, we'll go ahead and catch you on the next one. I don't know who the guest is going to be for next week. Jet Delta uh, Fox, you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> Jet, you got a new appointment, so make sure you get out of here. So thanks for tuning in. I'm going to go ahead and shut you off over here on IG. Share that. And then thanks again for tuning in one more time, YouTube. Uh, just as a sneak peek for those of you watching on YouTube, we got a new oh. video dropping on Tuesday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Don't miss it. I put a lot of heart into that video, so I, I hope you guys enjoy it. cries. I almost did, actually. <laughs> I really almost did. But, uh, we'll go ahead and catch you on the next one. Turn